is the news and talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. All right, uh, four minutes after the hour. This is the Court of Public Opinion, your voice, your opinion, your attitude on the issues of the day. Broadcasting out of Dallas-Fort Worth, uh, Monday through Friday from 2 to 5, your afternoon drive. Heard across the country from coast to coast, it's a toll-free number, 1-800-288-WBAP, 1-800-288-9227. Young man, 18 years old, he's a senior. Uh, at a high school in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. I I seriously doubt if he'll be the point man on CNN or MSNBC or Headline News or Morning Joe because he doesn't carry the narrative. He doesn't push the agenda. The headline reads, I'm a high school senior. We can make schools safer without curbing gun rights. You know, I've read this young man's article, and he's mature beyond his years. Um, he makes a lot of sense, and that's why you won't see him on the news. You know, he makes a, he makes the argument, um, <laughs> if gun control that we have doesn't prevent the kind of tragedy that occurred in Florida, why is it that so many people are fighting for? What is it? Change is needed, but that does not mean we have to strip law-abiding citizens of their rights. Uh, yeah, this is coming from an 18-year-old senior. Will um, Farthing, I, I want to make sure I pronounce it correctly, Will Farthing is with me. Uh, Will, if I may call you, Will, how you doing? I'm doing good, Rick. Thanks for having me on the show. You bet. Um, what What was the genesis for this piece that you wrote? I mean, where did this come from? Well, I, I obviously, I go to high school, and um, like a lot of high schoolers right now, I mean, People around me um, are really upset about um, the gun laws in the country. and But my problem is I watch the news every night like everybody else, and you see that, the like I say in the article, the only position that's given any credence is the pro-gun control position, the position that states that to be safe we need to take guns away from 18-year-olds, from 25-year-olds, from, from just certain types of guns. Maybe it's AR-15. Just people, I see that every night. Um, when I go home and when I'm at school, and they don't ever talk about the other half of us. I mean, there's there's millions of kids in this country and teenagers just like me who, who don't believe those things. So I got on my computer. I started writing things down. I, I have some um, people I work with at the Leadership Institute in, in D.C., and they got me hooked up with the Daily Signal, and they really wanted to give my opinion, the opinion of, of millions of other teenagers in America, you know, they wanted to give us a voice, and, and that's how the article got written and uh, published. You write, if I may quote you in third person, almost all of the students featured on cable news networks do nothing but criticize the National Rifle Association and claim that anyone who does not support their cause doesn't care about the victims of school shootings. The media coverage is not only biased, but morally deficient in that the large networks lie and insist they are politically neutral while propagandizing for one particular side. That's exactly right. It's not just on gun control issues. It's on political issues as well. Um, When you say, uh, Will, um, we can make our schools safer without curbing gun rights, specifically, what do you mean by that? Um, And in the article, I talk about this a little bit. I say, and as we saw, actually, in Maryland, uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before, there was another school shooting and an arm. An armed resource officer, a police officer, stopped the shooting. He fired at the shooter, and um, no, uh, as far as I know right now, only one person has died, and that's the shooter. And I, that's the solution I pose in my article, is that the government spends millions and millions of dollars on things that, you know, aren't worth spending money on. And, and they waste our money. They're inefficient. And so I advocate for cutting money from other parts of the government and from state governments and the federal government, and giving money to schools to put at least, at least, I would support two or three, but 
at least one armed police officer on school campuses from the beginning of the school day to the end of the school day. Oh, what about, and by the way, in that uh, school shooting you were talking about, um, you know, the gun smoke hadn't even blown away before politicians were jumping in front of cameras and saying, this is why we need to get rid of AR-15s and different background checks. Well, first of all, the kid used a, a pistol, and it was his dad, le- dad's legally purchased. Um, you know, I, I got a question for dad. What do you do with your firearm um, when you're not using it? Obviously, you don't lock it up. Um, you know, you, you talk about raising the minimum age when it's legal to purchase a rifle. Uh, expand on that a bit. Um, I, in the article, I don't advocate for raising the legal age to buy a rifle. Uh, I talk about, you know, Florida recently passed their law that raised the age of buying any firearm from 18 to 21. Right. And in the article, I, my, I complain about how we're under, in the eyes of the law, 18-year-olds are adults in America. We can be tried as adults. I say we can be, we can be drafted. We can serve our country and die overseas. But we can't purchase a firearm. And in Florida, you can't. So I just see that as unconstitutional for one and i'm glad the nra is suing the state of florida to you know fight for those 18 to 20 year olds rights but i don't support any ban on almost you know any weapon at the time i think that the more freedom people have the safer we all will be so as far as the gun bans go i'm I'm not in support of that whatsoever (laughs) well you write that uh, for those of us that support the constitution Florida's new law is just another example of liberal idealism limiting the rights of citizens while also failing to accomplish its goal. I couldn't agree more with you. Um, At the end of the day, do you think that maybe was a knee-jerk reaction to the Florida school shooting? Yes, and I do. And I, I, I hesitate to speak too negatively. You know, those people have gone through a lot, and I understand that. Uh, I, I can't imagine what that's like. But, you know, thank God I have never had to go through a school shooting, or my community has had to go through that. However, if every time something bad happens, we resort to taking away the rights of Americans, th- that that's a dangerous precedent to set. You know, and so now one constitutional right has been taken from the teenagers and twenty-year-olds of Florida, and you know if. Let's say and after this Maryland thing, handguns, are those next because we're afraid of a school shooting with handguns? I, I, it's, it's just a slippery slope in my eyes. And yeah, and at the end, yes, I think that the Florida legislature did what they did because people are, are emotionally upset and they want some comfort from the government right now. And so that's why Florida did what it did. Uh, talking with uh, Will Farthing, William Farthing, uh, I'm a high school senior. We can make schools safer without curbing gun rights. As I said, you probably won't see him uh, walking point on CNN or MSNBC because he doesn't, he doesn't drive that narrative. He doesn't drive that agenda. When we come back, Will, I, I've got to step aside very quickly. When we come back, I have a question. Uh, and I know you're a, a part of the, uh, shall I say, school group, teenage group. Uh, we saw thousands upon thousands of, of teenagers coming out um, in support of gun control, the walkout. Do you believe, based on what you saw, they were being manipulated, orchestrated as political pawns um, in these demonstrations and, and what you heard uh, was going on? Will uh, Will. Uh, Farthing is my guest. We'll come back, take your calls, and uh, he'll answer that next on News Talk 820 WBAP. All right, 417 the time. He's a high school senior, uh, wrote a piece, We Can Make School Safer Without Curbing Gun Rights. He is uh, 18-year-old Will Farthing. Um, Will, I I asked right before the break, you have witnessed the same thing we have um, CNN, it was wall-to-wall uh, kids saying they need government help, they need the government to do something, blaming the NRA. I mean, it was on and on and on. Do you believe that these kids, in some form or fashion, were being manipulated uh, to further a political agenda? Yeah, I, re- I really do, and not all of them. I think, because the media made it seem like the walkouts were for, you know, to show solidarity for the people who have been killed and for victims. 
And so a lot of kids, I think, walked out for that reason, you know, not particularly supporting gun control, but just to show that they care about the people who died. And then there were all there are other kids who use that large show of support to, you know, spread their message of gun, their political message. And I think the media focuses on those kids more than other kids who who were doing a good thing. That's what, that's what I think. Well, were, uh, have you ever been contacted by CNN or MSNBC? No, I have not. I, I, <laughs> I've never been contacted. They, they, they have their own agenda, and I don't think they want to hear from people like me or, or people like Kyle Cash, of who's a who's a Parkland survivor, who's pretty conservative. They, they want to push their agenda, and anyone who gets in the way of that, they're they're going to ignore. <laughs> yeah. Well, you 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 make that statement in your piece that people that don't uh, fall into the the crowd, so to speak under the tutelage of uh, Democrats, and I'm not making this a Republican-Democrat thing, but, you know, you, you've got to recognize it for what it is. You're saying that uh, your viewpoint is being largely, if not uh, totally, ignored. Uh, of, of course it is. Uh, but that's nothing new if you're a conservative young person. I mean, has CNN or MSNBC ever said anything about, you know, po- or anything positive about the pro-life movement or about, you know, the gun rights movement or about, you know, lowering taxes. Everything that is conservative is bad to them, and they will avoid it like the plague. And so the fact that the fact that they didn't want to put kids who support gun rights on after the Parkland shooting and after other, you know, school shootings doesn't surprise me in the slightest, and it really shouldn't surprise anyone in America at this point. Well, you also write about something that I talked at length about, most people didn't even know about. Uh, you write... In fact, if the Obama administration had not pressured school districts to lower their discipline rates to combat the school-to-prison pipeline, maybe the Parkland shooter, 19-year-old Nicholas Cruz, wouldn't have slipped through the cracks and the justice system would have prevented that tragedy that occurred at, uh, at the high school. Uh, tell people about that. All right, so um, during the Obama administration, there are high... Uh, discipline rates on, you know, students of different backgrounds, different races, different, you know, different everything. And so the Obama administration wanted to cut down on the negative, the negativity towards students from disadvantaged backgrounds who were going into school and getting in trouble and then and maybe getting arrested. They did something wrong. And there was this so-called school to prison pipeline where these students did They had a bad upbringing and they never got a chance. They went from school straight into a a hard life of of crime or, you know, being disadvantaged. So his, you know, the Obama administration through their Department of Education encouraged schools to cut down their discipline rates. And they, some schools, they talked about, you know, maybe holding back funding. And I know there were some threats there. I I don't know how far, how deep it ran, you know, but. All, every lots of counties around the country, including Broward County, and um, that was on Fox News the other night. You can see how the Broward County Sheriff's Department and um, the specific high school they they didn't report certain um, you know m- m- bad actions on the part of Nicholas Cruz, who ended up committing the shooting. And if they would have, you know, that could have, and he would have gotten in trouble or and maybe incarcerated or institutionalized. Maybe that could have prevented the shooting that happened in Parkland. Yeah, the prison to or the school to prison pipeline is something everybody needs to. Uh, you need to vet that. You need to take a look at that. And hopefully, we have reversed that action because that makes no sense at all. You also write, regardless of past failures, everyone knows that a determined shooter will find a way to get a gun. All the restrictions in the world won't stop a deranged teenager from taking a parent's rifle and trying to murder his classmates. Um, why, why do you think so many teenagers don't understand that common sense approach to this? Um, I, honestly, I, I don't know. Uh, I, the funny thing is I wrote that statement uh, two, three days before the Maryland shooting where a teenager stole his parents' pistol and, and you know, shot up the high school. So it, it rains true, but... I think most students who support gun control see the government and and what they're doing trying to control people as the only way to really keep us safe. They they don't get that 
they think if the government makes a law, like they say something's illegal, then it's that that's the last word on it. People aren't going to do it. It's illegal now. And they completely overlook the fact that people break laws every day, and that is the nature of, of humanity. We People do things wrong all the time. So I, I think that they are just so trusting that if the government does something and tries to prevent something, that it's really going to make a difference. Yeah, you also wrote, like I say, you're mature beyond your years, and you've done some research before this piece, I can tell. Um, As a nation, we should not let the victims of the shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School die in vain. We need to stop with the rhetoric that more gun control laws will make any notable difference when it comes to preventing school shootings. And then you lay out uh, some solutions. You don't just... uh, Talk about the problems well, as far as armed arm police officers and things like that. Um, i got to ask you, what, what, uh, what do you plan to do? Because, as I say, a very good piece. You're sort of swimming against the tide, certainly politically, and with other teenagers. What, uh, what are your plans? What do you want to do when you get out of high school? I'm going uh, to North Carolina State University. I'm going to study political science and hopefully go into politics. I'd love to be, you know, I'd love to run for state, you know, state representative, and then hopefully, you know, federal politics. That's my whole interest in my life. That's what I'm passionate about. Well, uh, you're on a good track, uh, and you've got an uphill battle, but I'm sure you know that. Uh, I want you to stay in touch with me, will you? Oh, of course. Uh, Will Will, uh, Farthing. Great piece. Uh, it's uh, entitled, I'm a high school senior. We can make schools safer without curbing gun rights. Uh, it's a uh, society commentary. And again, David, uh, this, uh, this uh, is what? This is on the, uh, what, the website that I got it from? Yes. Uh, Daily Caller. Okay. Da- Daily Signal, excuse me. Daily, Daily Signal. Daily Signal. Okay. Apologize. Uh, so look that up. Daily Signal. Will uh, Farthing. Uh, just a great piece. And I'm wondering if you would sit down with 10 teenagers from various high schools, have them read this piece, what would their response be? All right. Uh, my thanks again to Will Farthing. Uh, 425 The Time. I'm Rick Roberts, News Talk 820 WBAP.